Welcome to Build. My name is Rihanna Dillon, and we are coming live from London with the incredible Charity Wakefield and Finette Robinson. Hi. <laughs> If you've got a question for them, please do tweet us at Build Series LDN, or if you're watching on Facebook, pop a comment in the box below and we will do our very best to get them to you guys. But first of all, you're both performing in Amelia at the Globe. I saw it last night. It is incredible. <laughs> um, so, Vinette, you play one of three Amelias. Can you tell us who she was, why we're just hearing about her now? Uh, well, she was the first published... A female poet in England, which was an incredibly huge deal because women weren't allowed to write. Um, and uh, she is often accredited as Shakespeare's dark lady, so that's how she's known. But there's very little known about her, even though she led this incredible life. Um, she was a trailblazer, kind of feminist, um, who was really pushing against the constraints of her time. Mm -hmm. And Michelle Terry, the artistic director of The Globe, found her story and was like, why is this woman not known? Mm -hmm. And so, hence the commissioning of the play. Fabulous. And Charity, you get to play one of the greatest playwrights of all time, <laughs> William Shakespeare himself, <laughs> um, and at The Globe. That must be a phenomenal experience. I have to say, it's, it's pretty little... incredible. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I look really, like, lost and that my clothes are too big in that photo. <laughs> That's kind of part of the character, too, I think. Um, the, the thing to know about me playing Will Shakespeare or Will Shakespeare being in this play is that he's one of the supporting characters in Amelia's story. Mm -hmm. um, it's a biography of her life and a lot of it's imagined. Um, and I think a very a good imagining, something that feels quite real when you watch it. You see her home life and you see her relationships and you see how the men in her life deal with the fact that there are other men in her life. <laughs> and um, I think we see somewhat of the gender roles swapping in this play. Um, Amelia is written as in, like Vinette says, trailblazing and fierce, and someone that can speak with passion and eloquence. Shakespeare, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, it's interesting when you play someone like that who writes so incredibly, you think maybe they wouldn't have been so good socially, actually. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe they wouldn't have been able to really speak with flow there's a reason why he would have painstakingly written and been such a, a keen observer of all walks of life, all characters. Um, and our play supposes that, that Shakespeare and Amelia Bassano had a relationship and um, that they would have been in passionate love with one another and talked and talked and talked. And that it, it's, a, it's a possibility that Amelia's words, in fact, have been thriftily stolen by Shakespeare and planted in his plays. That's a supposition, but it's one that I think is entirely possible, yeah. and it's certainly great fun playing those scenes where that happens. Um, I know there's a lot of um, intrigue amongst scholars as to whether Shakespeare did write everything, whether he didn't, and I think this kind of plays nicely into that debate. Mm. But like I said, the story's about Amelia... We're a cast of 13 women mm -hmm. playing both men and women. Most of us play about, I think I play five, maybe six parts. I've lost count. <laughs> I know. So many wig changes. <laughs> I have tashes. I have a big beard in one of them. Yeah. <laughs> You're going through um, all of my questions. Oh, yeah. well, I'm just getting there. <laughs> um, I just want to show the audience a little bit of a flavour of the play first. Let's have a look. There are so many moments that feel incredibly relevant, even though this is set in the 1500s. Do you think audiences are going to be surprised by that? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think people might go into the glow with a certain expectation of mm -hmm. what they're going to see, and I think this play explodes that. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a conversation. Um, the play is a conversation with uh, Shakespeare, I suppose, mm -hmm. um, what Shakespeare means in that building. But it's very much a play for now. Yeah. And it shows, uh, it uses Amelia's story to, to highlight what we're battling mm -hmm. now. Because there is talk about immigration, talk about race. Mansplaining. And, oh, my God. <laughs> like, it's just, uh, you know, watching it, you're like, this, the fact that history is repeating itself, mm -hmm. that must be quite frustrating <laughs> when you're having those same conversations on the stage that we're having, you know, hundreds of years ago that we're still having today. But I feel like this play could only be written and being performed now yeah, because yeah. it's at a time when we're having these conversations about um, women's place in the world and as part of the conversation of minorities. So I almost feel like 
it almost feels like Amelia has risen yeah. now yeah. for a reason. Like, she's reached across the centuries. And I loved how much comedy there was in it. I laughed so much last night, as did the rest of the audience. And also the dance routines were amazing. There are dance routines in this, um, which, again, wasn't expecting. Tell me about the choreography and learning those. Um, well, this has been a really very different theatrical experience for me. Um, I haven't done a play in a while, and I knew that it was going to be musical and that there was going to be movement and set pieces, but I don't think I realised how much we as actors were going to be <clears throat> involved in kind of creating some of that. Mm -hmm. um, the music was written by Bill Barclay, and it also has some original pieces, some Sephardic Jewish um, songs, mm -hmm. uh, but the movement... Um, really did come via um, Anna Morrissey, um, the, the choreographer, working with us in the rehearsal. So taking, the play bounces between a sort of strict Elizabethan setting, but it at times becomes more contemporary, which mm -hmm. is a form that we didn't know would work and now we know it does. People love it when we speak in like colloquial ways. Mm -hmm. um, and the dance moves do that too. So we, we kind of explored in rehearsal, okay, this is how Elizabethan men would do their kind of very posh pavan moves and how do men dance now socially with one another. <laughs> oh my God, who were you studying? Who were you looking at? Uh, every, every man I've ever, ever met on the dance floor. <laughs> um, a lot of grinding. Yeah, yeah well, actually, yeah. There was, <laughs> there was but, grinding in rehearsal. Yeah, it was that we point. pushed it to the extreme and then tried to find what would work on stage and how, how contemporary could we get within it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And what the modern equivalent is of Amelia being... Um, well, t targeted by a bunch yeah, of men, yeah. what the equivalent of that would be now yeah. in a club. Yeah. <laughs> the kind of creepy you know. looks across the yeah. room, like, yeah. got my eye on you, girl. Also <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I think Morgan um, does a great thing, actually, in a play, it's all females, we're, we're all playing men. Structurally, it works really well, we've discovered since it's been on stage, in that the first few characters you see are women, mm -hmm. and then the men come on in this big dance scene, kind of all together, and we call it the rhino dance. <laughs> Because that's the kind of weird style that we've adopted. We kind of like, we're watching the women and we come on a sort of like stompily and kind of, you know, and then all become very um, uh, sort of, I guess, I don't know what the word is, mesmerised mm -hmm. by Amelia, mm -hmm. who at that time is played by Leah Harvey mm -hmm. as the younger Amelia. And um, stage. yeah, that's her. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so in love in that picture, <laughs> even though I'm wearing a fake tash. <laughs> I loved She's your going with it. Ash. You <laughs> had a great facial hair and great wigs. Thanks. So how was that? Who was your favourite wig? <laughs> uh, oh, I, I play a sort of horrible drunk man and I have a wig that we have called Chesney after Chesney Hawks. The blonde. <laughs> if you watch blonde, it. You are, yeah, the I like that one. <laughs> I also do Hawks. like Valentine's beard. Valentine that. Sims, mm -hmm. who was a dodgy printer. In, all of the characters are, are taken from real life characters oh, in Elizabethan times. Amazing. So you could research any of them. And actually, the, what's one of the great, other great things about the play, there's fantastic female characters. Um, Margaret Clifford, mm -hmm. who was a widow, who um, in, in the Elizabethan era, if you were a female, you didn't own anything of your own at all. Um, everything was owned by your parents or by your husband, unless you were a widow. If you were a widow, you could be strong in society and you could have claims to, of your own and you could um, fight in, you could have people fight for your things in court. And um, uh, Margaret Clifford set up an amazing, sort of like a charity for other widows that ran for 350 years because she was clever enough to get That's that incredible. bit of copy in the legal. Um, in the legalese of it. And also Mary Sidney, who was uh, an incredible... I mean, she was like an adventurer, an artist, a patron. She was also a poet. She, mm -hmm. We suppose that she would have advised Amelia and encouraged Amelia. Um, and actually, Mike, Mark Rylance came to see the show last night and he headed backstage and headed straight for Anna Anderson and said... I'm so delighted to see Mary Sidney oh, on the really? stage because the Globe know about all of these characters. Yeah, They're yeah. part of the fabric. And it's so nice Mark to Ryland's see Mark Ryland's coming and praising you. That's pretty... I mean, he's in a yeah. at the Globe as well right now. He is, so. which is so fun because we reference that play heavily. Yes, yes, so, yeah. we do. Um, and you get on into like a real physical fight with each other on stage as well. We have like, a massive fight in the show. <laughs> well, I call it a fight. She beats the out of She me. does beat you. <laughs> I do. So I love that. Any like accidental punches or a kick? Or no, <laughs> though I, I do 
did get really worried in rehearsals yeah. about charity, but she just kept saying, hit me hard, hit me harder. And I'm like, I don't want to hurt you. I charity have padding, I have padding. Yeah. <laughs> but as long as it looks like I'm yeah. really hurting her. It, it did. Thing. I was Good. wincing. Um, <laughs> Vinette, when you're sharing the same character with two other actors, how do you workshop it? Are you trying to give quite similar performances or are you encouraged to bring your individuality? Um, Nicole Charles, the director, had said that it was okay, that it, it, it was okay for us to be very different. Mm -hmm. We're at very different stages of her life, mm -hmm. but I think you can't, we were, we were all in the rehearsal room together all the time. So it wasn't like we saw separate rehearsals, so you can't help but be influenced by the other Amelias. And also when you're playing in character, you, you know, you, I'm not just looking at my section of her life. Mm -hmm. It has to be influenced by the whole of her life. So um, there's a bit of, what's the word, osmosis? Uh -huh, yeah. Um, but yeah, there wasn't any definite sort of rehearsal techniques where we tried to borrow each other's movements mm -hmm. or anything. I think it just sort of came as a group. Actually. And for those who don't know, the Globe is open air and there are groundlings, um, <laughs> people standing in the audience as well as sitting. And so you guys have to walk through that and crawl through them in your case. And what's that like? It must be quite nerve wracking. Someone... No, it's really fun. Really? <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. Well, I remember because we did that in the rehearsal room, mm -hmm. obviously, before we got to the stage and you can't quite imagine it. Yeah. But the first time we we got on stage to start teching because there's tour groups in the globe that come in and watch you mm -hmm. when you're on the stage rehearsing right. and so some of the tour groups came down into the fourth stage and that's when the scene really came alive and we were just like oh god this is so exciting because you feed off them and that's mm -hmm. what's so special about that space should be scary but it's not they yeah. give you energy it's a real communal experience and it just feels Really fun. What about all the debris? I mean, last night I was there and I know you like trod on someone's <laughs> bag or something. And and, I, <laughs> and it was like, but it was in the way. I mean, it was happened? in the way. Well, Shakespeare's very, very happy to <laughs> command people in his own space. So I'm yeah. very happy as Shakespeare to just tell them what to do and get that bag out of the way. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And they quite like it when you do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it can be, it can, anything can happen. But that's why it's such a live space. Mm -hmm. I think the people that stand in the yard to watch the plane, if you ever go to the Globe, I thoroughly recommend that you do it. It's only five quid to get a ticket to watch it that way. So mm. it's dead cheap. Yeah. And there's something that happens to your body when you're just when you're actually standing and you're that close to the actors. Your your body's more energized. And in the old days, and I know this because I years ago worked at the Globe doing Globe education tours with kids. Oh, my first oh. job, one of my first jobs in theatre was to do Othello, but for kids oh, as God, part amazing. of um, Globe education. And I used to take kids on the tour. And we learned that they were called the penny stinkards in that <laughs> bit of the yard. I wonder why that was. Well, very stinky people. It was only a penny. All the rich people would sit really high and they'd sit there to be watched. And um, at that time, it was for the, the public, mm -hmm. which meant that the plays had to be really hardy, which is one of the reasons that they're so... The Shakespeare plays are so kind of bloodthirsty or they're really funny. They're, they're extreme because they're constantly trying to get the audience's attention. And so when you have big monologues, those big Shakespeare monologues, in some black box theatres, you might see them delivered in a way that's very introverted, or on film, you might see it really thought through and internalised. In that space, you just can't do that. And a brilliant example of that in our play is Vinette, actually, who's incredible. And the first few times I watched Vinette do these big pieces, I, I was in tears, even though I was acting opposite her as Shakespeare, <laughs> because there's something so moving and releasing about that space and about the way that, not to speak for you, but the way that you perform it with with the audience in your sights. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that is harder to do than if it's a comic moment. If it's a comic moment, then there's a real sense of fun. But when it's, when it's tragedy and drama, I don't know how that feels, because I don't do it, but... No, I find it really helpful because you, you're looking at people's eyes and you can see them affected by it. And, that's, and so then that changes you and how you say the next line. So I find that much easier than the traditional sort of black box theatre. And I, I wouldn't have thought that before I did it. Mm -hmm. but, um, no, but that's why, as we've said before, it's just such an incredibly special place. 
And you've mentioned working in an all-female production, and, which is so rare and exciting and incredible. How did that enhance your experience? Well, I was just really stunned by the fact that it just felt really normal. <laughs> I was like, it's all women. That's fine. It's just the same as always, because women are just humans. <laughs> it wasn't like, ooh, all the women are doing really women stuff. I don't know. It was just like, this is totally normal. There should always be loads of women around. Mm -hmm. and, and really, there should mostly just be a good, proper mix of people. Yeah. Um, but this play, it's, it's, it's inherent in the script. It was written for an all-female cast, and, and there's a play on, on the fact that Shakespeare's plays were all played by men. Mm -hmm. There's a brilliant moment in our play where we are playing... Uh, Amelia and Shakespeare and we're it's set in the globe and in fact Othello comes on stage so Will Shakespeare is setting up for the second act and they start to play and um, oh, I can't say it without giving it away but a big event happens on the stage involving this one and um, <laughs> one of my favourite ad-libbed lines is one of the actors going there's a woman on the stage <laughs> get her off yeah, it's really funny it's really good <laughs> um, we have a question from Twitter Dan 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 asks uh, Charity you're obviously playing a bloke in the play if you could play any traditionally male character from a play or a film who would you play? probably be Phileas Fogg around the world in 80 days <laughs> something like That's that amazing. or just uh, any an adventurer I'd really like to do or Scott of the Antarctic something like that oh what about you Vinette because you didn't get to play a guy in this no but... I'm just thinking now I kind of like an action uh, hero type Ooh, but uh, that's becoming yeah. more common now isn't it like women are female yeah, yeah. Like in the Expendables 3 or something yeah <laughs> why not <laughs> Um, so last night you got like three encores and a standing ovation and it was such a thrill because it was your opening night. What did you do afterwards to celebrate? Parted. <laughs> <laughs> did yes. you? Did you go mad last night? Was it so... We a little bit did go mad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's traditional it's on a press night that you would mm -hmm. have a party, but I think it's been such an incredible experience and, and quite intense at times. Yeah. Um, and we, you can never expect that reaction. That, that we got. And yeah. so I think it was just this huge <laughs> relief. Yeah. It was just, we were all run, running around going a bit, going a bit mad. With shots in the Storming the stage. No, uh, no, no shots. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of Prosecco. We, we had lot. gone as a, as a cast to see Othello and I won't name the actress in our cast that sent on, on a group WhatsApp message. Now, the Othello press night ran out of bubbles too early so that must not happen on our <laughs> night. So we brought in We all Lara. brought in, in extras. Yeah. You were prepared. Um, right, we, we're kind of coming to the end of it but I just want to know what you've got coming up next. So, Charity, you just mentioned that you've become an ambassador Yes, I've just become an ambassador for the Woodland Trust, um, which Exciting. is an amazing organisation mm -hmm. um, that works to uh, create new forests and um, preserve ancient woodland and does an awful lot to um, look after the environment. That's something I've always been very passionate about. So, um, yes, I'm just starting to work with them and in both supporting their um, projects mm -hmm. and plans that they already have and um, also creating my own. I'm going to do, a, a hopefully, a super big project next summer, oh. which I will reveal all when, it, when I get Exciting. it sorted out. Exciting, <laughs> Vinette. Uh, I filmed a film earlier this year called Ilkley. Ilkley, which yes. will, um, I don't know when it's going to be released, but that was really fun, kind of dark, offbeat comedy. Who stars in it with you? Harry Melling. Amazing. Who's brilliant? Yeah, uh, it's directed by uh, uh, Roger Allen is in it. Um, Anna Maxwell Martin. Roger Allen has got the best voice in the world. Yes, he's he got has. such an incredible voice. But he's got an incredible cast, and it's directed by Harry Michelle. It's his second feature. Okay. Um, yeah. So we'll be looking out for you in that, and you can see both Charity and Vanette on stage right now in Amelia and I really 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 recommend you get tickets because honestly this is just one of the best performances I've ever seen and it, sorry to be I'm not oh, fangirling aren't oh, I you. I promise I wouldn't do this no, but thank you it's, it's phenomenal go and see it I'm afraid that's all we've got time for please give it up for charity and Vinette <laughs> Up next, we have got Wallace Day to chat about new series Krypton, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for joining us. 